Hi everyone, welcome to this mini ArcViz series. I'll be showing you the workflow to take this SketchUp model and create beautiful renderings like this. Each video will be focused on one room, and the first video is going to be focused on this hallway. So what I've done is I've actually provided this beautiful 3D model for you. The link is in the description, and you're going to have access to this 3D model. We've got all the different rooms modeled, and you'll be able to render off of this. So let's get started. I've provided a 3D model of this project called Lightly Weighted by Oil Booth Architects. It's a beautiful project filled of beautiful different spaces, and my goal is to show you how to create these. So first things first, I'm gonna open up D5, and I'm going to import the model. Again, link is in the description. Once that's loaded, I'm gonna click and drag out and place it somewhere in my scene. Left click. And what I like to do is I always zero out the models that way if I have multiple models on top of each other, they can land in the same spot. I'm gonna switch over to fly mode and let's check out the model. So like I said earlier, every single space is modeled and we'll be covering each room in a different video. So this one is all about this hallway right here. So this is the reference. We've got a couple different types of concrete. We've got a wood material and we've got a painted staircase here and this ceiling material that looks like a concrete. So first things first, I wanna start with the concrete materials. So since concrete is a typical asset, I'm going to open up the D5 library, go over to material and I'm gonna search for concrete. And I wanna find something that looks similar to our reference photo. So as you can see, it's kind of rough, it's not smooth. So something that's named rough, right, is actually a perfect option. So I'm gonna grab this and let's paste it on the wall here. This looks good. Okay, perfect. So now that we've got that, I'm gonna apply the same thing to our ceiling and I'm just gonna make it black. So to duplicate, go up here, click duplicate, and now let's change the color. So I'm gonna hit eyedropper one more time and I'm going to darken the base color just so it doesn't look as gray. Okay, perfect. All right, cool. So now let's tackle the concrete here. Let's go to assets and let's look for something a little bit smoother. Let's scroll down. This looks pretty good, white concrete. I'll grab that, put that here, and I'm just gonna darken this a little bit with gray. Perfect. Okay, so there's two materials we have here that we've already applied in SketchUp, and we can actually leverage the AI tools that D5 has to make them look a little more realistic. You see how flat this looks? This doesn't look great at all. So I'm gonna hit my eyedropper and right under base color map, we can actually enhance the texture. So it's low res, let's make it high res by clicking ultra HD texture. I'm gonna hit confirm. Look at how much more realistic that looks, okay? Now I'm going to go up here and generate the other texture maps because I don't have a normal map or a roughness map and it's just going by generic values. So let's click that. Okay, perfect. And now you'll see that the normal map is working. And if you're unfamiliar with what a normal map is, check this out. If I hit zero, it's beginning to look super flat like before. If I bump it up to one, it's going to look like actual carpet where it's not super flat uh, and it's actually uneven. Our ambient occlusion map is gonna help add some shadows in those little nooks. I'm gonna lower it just a little bit. It seems a little too dark. I just want a little bit of that. Okay, perfect. So we've got our concretes. Now we've got this paint material. So I'm gonna go over to assets and let's search for paint. I wanna grab something with a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna grab this warm colors, paint the old walls, and I'm gonna paste it right here. So you see that there's a lot of tiling right here and that doesn't look that great. So right down here under UV randomizer, we can check mark that and that's gonna help break up the texture. But most importantly, we should also turn on triplanar and that's gonna fix the scaling of our material here, as well as fix a lot of that, that tiling there. The other thing we can do is add round corner. You'll notice that all these corners are super sharp. That's not realistic. Let's add that and that's gonna help soften all these edges. I'm gonna increase that just a little bit. Okay, cool. And what you're seeing is the light is actually being grabbed right here. So that's gonna make it look much more realistic. Let's add some color to our base color. So somewhere around here, and it was a little dark. Okay, I'm going to desaturate it. Okay. All right, that's looking better. I'm just going to make it a little bit more red, a little more vibrant. Exactly. 
Awesome. Again, that's that round corner working. And the other thing that kind of looks weird is there's not enough reflection in our paint here. So check this out. If I increase our specular, you see how we're getting a reflection here? That's exactly what we want. If I lower this, it's gonna to start to make it look more like a mirror finish, which we don't want, but I will lower it a little bit. We do want it to have a gloss feel because it is a paint. Look at how much better that looks. Now that we're catching some light here. Okay, the next material I wanna tackle is this wood right here. We're gonna do the same thing with the AI workflow. We're gonna go up here and click AI. Once that's done, you'll see that the material already looks so much better. We can see, look at what's happening here. It looks so much more realistic. So I'm gonna play with this just a little bit. You don't want it to be too shiny, just a little sheen. Yeah, that looks great. I'm probably gonna desaturate the texture a little bit. So a little pro tip under base color map, if you grab this, you can desaturate right with this slider. Okay, we don't want it to be too cedar looking. You know, let's look at the reference photo. See how it's not super, super vibrant? So now that I'm looking at this, let's tweak the concrete here just a little bit. I wanna increase the uh, the scaling and I wanna fix some of this, um, this repeating texture stuff. So we'll do our randomizer. We'll make it triplanar and already that looks so much better. And just for the sake of being consistent, we'll include our round corner. All right. So if we look down here, we actually have a little transition strip. This is a typical you know, stainless steel looking uh, chrome metal. You can see that right here. See how that's shiny. So I'm going to go back to assets. Let's go to metal. Make sure you clear out your search. I'm gonna grab this aluminum color and make sure you hit the green there. Perfect. Okay, cool. So now let's take care of our light right here. We want this to be emissive and emissive just means to glow. So right under here, I can actually tell it to glow. You see that? That's too bright, I'll leave it around 10. But if I want, I can actually get really specific and choose a light color. I'm gonna leave it somewhere around 5,000. Okay, this, can be a, uh, a dark paint color. I can just grab this, our stair material, and duplicate it and make it gray or black. So I've selected that, and now I'm just going to change the color to be black. Perfect. All right, our picture frame here. Typically, art is covered with some sort of glass, so let's just make this look super shiny. I'm going to lower that. Exactly, so we get a little bit of a reflection there. Just want a little bit. Okay, perfect. So the main materials are done, except for our little light switch here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm actually gonna grab this material because we've already done the properties. A big time saver is reusing a lot of the assets you have. It doesn't make sense to rebuild everything from scratch. So I'm gonna tweak this a little bit so it's not so dark. It should be a little gray, okay. And I'm gonna change the scale because the scale is way off here. I'm gonna do five, yep. And I'm gonna lower the round corner just so it's not as extreme. And let's make this a shiny material. So I'm gonna lower the roughness because it's kind of like a, a painted gloss, right? Okay. Yeah, much better. Okay, cool. Now that the materials are done, let's talk about the lighting, okay? If we look at the reference photo, you'll see we've got this soft, beautiful light here. It's nice and warm. You see this orange color we're getting here? And you see how soft it is right around here? So let's do that. There's two ways of handling light in D5. We can do it through the dynamic sky or we could do it through the HDRI. Since we have like a very specific time of day with how the shadows cast, let's tackle it via geo and sky. But in order to see the shadows correctly, we should probably put a stool here. So let's go to assets. I'm gonna go to model and let's look for a stool. And we're just trying to match the, uh, the reference image. I like this one, we'll grab that. And I'm gonna place it right here. Perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is go to our environment and I'm going to start rotating the sun. Yeah, we'll leave it in the afternoon. And I'm gonna change the offset. Just think of this as the rotation. And we wanna start seeing, exactly. We wanna start seeing some light come out this way. So let's open up the reference image one more time. We're beginning to match that profile here, but you'll notice that this should be much softer. So in order to do that, let's turn on custom sun. 
because we want to actually tweak a lot of these properties. So let's tweak the altitude and azimuth. So azimuth, think of this as the rotation. And let's find something similar to what we had before. Do something like this. And let's rotate it just something like that. Perfect. Okay. So this is super sharp. So to fix this, all we're going to do is boost the sun disk radius. So check that out. You see how it broke up all those super sharp lines before and after. And if I lower the sunlight intensity just a little bit more, it won't be as harsh. So now that we've done that, let's set up our camera. So I'm going to get into the rough position of where that photo was taken and I'm going to hit scene list. So we create a new scene. If I click this camera now, I can start editing the field of view. So I'm going to make this full screen and let's do somewhere around 26. This looks good. And so I'm basing this off of how much is cut off down here. So if I bring up the original image, you see how we can't see the full opening. We can just see a bottom portion of it. And I'm going to rotate the camera just a little bit to the left. And I'm going to update here. So a couple of things I want to do is let's tweak some of our post-processing settings. I'm going to lower, I'm going to turn off the auto exposure just so I have full control. Okay. And I'm going to leave it somewhere around 0.2. Okay. And I'm just going to update my scene and I'm going to raise the white balance just a little bit, just so I get some more warmer colors. If I want to inject the scene with a little bit more color, I can actually add some light cards outside. So let me show you that. If I go out here and I hit the light button right here and I grab a rectangular light and I rotate this to face the, the window and put it up here and let's scale this just so it covers the whole window. I can change the temperature to be slightly warmer. So now when I come over here and I'm just going to be super extreme with the intensity, just so we could see the color a little bit more, but you see how much warmer that is. So I'm going to leave that somewhere around, somewhere around 15, but you see how we're getting that warmth in here. I'm going to do the same thing with the bathroom. So I'm going to hit V just to switch to my, my mover and hold down shift and this arrow. I'm just going to move that up and I'm going to shrink the window light just a little bit. Okay. I want to make sure that I'm getting light through here because if we look at the reference photo, see how there's a little bit of light coming through. I'm going to boost the intensity just a little bit. Exactly. So we get the light pouring through. So that looks great. And if I look at the reference one more time, you see that there's a lot of blue light up here. We could put a light card up there and point that down. So let's do that. So I'm going to go outside, I'm going to hit V and then shift and I'm going to rotate this 90 and then just a little bit like that. So it goes down the stairs and let's make sure I'm over the staircase. Exactly. I'm going to go a little bit higher up. Okay. So this is going to be super bright. So what I'm going to do is lower the intensity, say 20 and let's make it super cool around there. Let's drop the intensity some more. Perfect. So now we're getting a nice little balance between the warm and the cold. So I could drop this down even more. That looks good. Awesome. So now let's go back to our scene. We've got the light pouring through here light coming through there and our cold light here. So this is ready to render. So I'm going to go over here to image. And if you want, you can play with the aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio is how you're cutting your image. If I do 16 by nine, you see anything that's great here that won't come out, right? Anything that's in this frame will be rendered. See if I switch it, this will be chopped off. Another example. So if you ever want to tweak that, just click the camera button right here. I'm going to go click this. I'm going to make sure our projection mode is in two point perspective. That's going to make all of our verticals perfectly straight. And now let's find an aspect ratio that looks good. I go nine by 16. It's going to give me a nice vertical crop, but I need to compensate that with my focal length. So now that I've switched to nine by 16, let's boost the focal length just so it counterbalances our aspect ratio. I'm going to leave it 
let's say 50. Nice and even. Okay, I'm going to refresh that. 18. And now I'm going to do a test render. I'm just going to uncheck channels and tell it I want a 4K image. So let's render out this 4K image. Now that that's done, I'm going to open up the image and let's see what we've got. Not bad for 10 minutes, right? So now let's do a little comparison to the original. Okay, we'll do a little critique. So I think overall my lighting is probably too bright. I can lower the exposure to bring down the overall exposure of the scene. Uh, I can desaturate these guys a little bit more and raise my light up here. This is now revealed because of the, uh, the vertical layout. So let's do that. Let's do some minor finishing touches. So I'm gonna hit close. I'm gonna go over to effect. Let's lower the exposure. Let's try, try 0.1. I'm going to hit X and let me just make sure my scene is all updated and let me desaturate this just a bit. Leave that at negative 41. That's cool. All right, let's go to environment and I'm gonna lower the intensity to 0.35. Okay, and let's lower some of the lights outside. I'm just gonna update that. I always get a little paranoid. I wanna make sure I don't lose my work. Okay, and let's see how bright these guys are. It's at 15, let's bump this down to 12. Let's make this 75 and let's raise this one a bit just so it's out of our sight. Yeah, so we're getting a nice soft light there. All right, I'm gonna go back to scene one. This is looking much better. Let's go over to render again with 4K and let's try one more time. So much better. This looks great. Now let's compare it to the original. Yeah, look at how soft it is. We've matched the lighting. This is awesome. Yeah, feel free to continue working on this. If I were to continue working on this, I'd probably play with the effects a little bit more. Maybe add a lookup table, play with some of our lights here. But overall, I'm really happy with this. So thanks for following this tutorial. Let me know which space you'd like to do next. See you next time.